Hi, this is Ted Price from Insomniac Games, and on today's episode of the Game Maker's Notebook, I had a lot of fun talking with Michelle Koch, co-game director and art director, and Raul Barbe, creative and game director for Don't Nod. Don't Nod is, among other things, the creator of the critically acclaimed Life is Strange franchise. During our very in-depth conversation, we covered how and why Don't Nod tackles topics that few other developers are willing to address. We talked about the challenges of creating episodic content, and we talked a little bit about where they believe interactive storytelling is heading for them in the future. Welcome to the Game Makers Notebook, a podcast featuring a series of in-depth one-on-one conversations between game makers providing a thoughtful, intimate perspective on the business and craft of interactive entertainment. The Game Maker's Notebook is presented by the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, a member-driven organization dedicated to the recognition and advancement of interactive entertainment. So Michelle and Raul, thank you very much for being here on the Game Maker's Notebook today. Thanks. 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 Uh, thanks for offering, offering us the chance to be here. It's good. <laughs> well, it's it's you guys have just released the last episode in a groundbreaking series. So Life is Strange 2. And so what does it feel like now that the last episode is out and people are starting to respond? Um, I think we're quite happy uh, and uh, happy uh, to to reach uh, this ending because it was a quite long production. It's four years now. Uh, you know, we have uh, created also the awesome adventure of Captain Spirit in the meantime. So it's like shipping uh, six small games uh, in, uh, in four years. So yeah, it was... Uh, Quite difficult, so we're quite happy, and uh, I mean, I would say relieved also because yeah. it's uh, um, it's you know it's com- quite complicated to work on the on the sequel of a game that worked quite well that has some kind of uh, cult following from some some fans. Uh, I mean, the first episode has a fan base that was really vocal about la- loving loving the first game. So when you start to go and and work on a sequel where you cannot have a direct sequel when you have to have new characters, new new themes. Yeah, it was a bit stressful to see how would it work. Would the, it's always you know the curse of uh, the sequel of something that was beloved. So how do we make something that resonates as well as the first game and without frustrating too much of the player because you are not continuing the story of, of the characters of the, of the first game. Um, but we see that episode five is working quite well and we have a good reception. So yeah, it's. Uh, Remove a bit of weight on the shoulders. <laughs> yeah, to see that the players are seeing the big picture now, it's really cool to see that they, I think they understand what we try to achieve with this new story. So it's really cool. When, when you guys were considering moving on to uh, moving off of Life is Strange One and moving on to a sequel, what was the decision process you went through to decide to do episodic content? Mm. To go back with episodic, yeah, again, yeah. <laughs> uh, was already go back, yeah. I mean, because yeah. it's something that you know, you your game is super high profile, and and it's I know it's a lot of work to do. But ep- those of us who make more sort of box product games, we are terrified of episodic content. So that's why I want to know more. Yeah, it's yeah, it's weird to hear that because it's exactly the same for us. I think a, a, a bigger game or like a, a, not even not triple A, but a, lo- a longer game is uh, for me very hard to yeah, see as a wall for the rhythm, yeah. for the, the pace, for the player, etc. If with episodic, I think this is really one of the, the I would say the best the, thing about it. Yeah, the, the number one yeah, quality of this format is. Uh, you you have really to focus on a I would say short episode like two or three hours of uh, gameplay, uh, so you have you will be I think I will be at least more effective in the story in the narrative in the design uh, and in the rhythm of those two and three hours because I I know that the player will play th- this episode in a row uh, usually and mm-hmm. so I can have a, a, a lot of control on the mm-hmm. character development. Uh, even like gameplay evolution, etc. on this episode. And we just yeah. have to do that five times and you've got this whole game. But I think on a rhythm, really a point of view and pacing, uh, it helped me a lot to be forced to divide uh, yeah. the content. I think when you do a, a, a big game or a longer game, you do the same by chapters. But here we have to ship it. We have uh, this ending to be effective at each time, etc. Et so I think it, it forces us uh, 
as director to 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 push this aspect yeah and for example on the on the writing side uh, uh, it's i see for me for with with the, the narrative design team it's way more easier to we have to make the game in order so you know with this kind of game with this branching and the story choice uh, so we have first episode it's done and it's written and we start to 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 write on episode two episode three we can really also look back at everything we write on the first episode use it again it's really i would say easier <laughs> than when you're making the big game completely and you might sometimes start by trying to finalize the scene that's at the end of the game before having every i don't know um so for us it was really this forcing us to create the game chronology chronolog chronologically sorry uh it brings some sort of uh an easier way, I would say. Um, yeah. And to answer your, your question directly about the second season compared to the first one, it was also a discussion with a publisher, with Square Enix. Uh, but I think we wanted to tell a story with the same length as the first one, for sure. So we discussed a bit about the number of episodes, but very quickly, we, we've been... Five was really cool for the first one, and we, really we wanted to keep the same structure. And very quickly, when we... I finished to write the main story. This five episode structure was working very well, even in the evolution of the characters. And you know that this time is not, uh, the first time was uh, uh, during a week, a whole week. It was uh, five days during a week, the first, ep uh, the first season, sorry. But this new season is more a road trip structure. Uh, it's on, a w on one year. And so it allowed really, it allowed us to put to create some ellipses between mm. each episode. So the, the time uh, I spent between two episodes, so we can really, I think, make the, the characters evolve uh, a lot more mm. uh, be between each episode. This is a, f That's a, a, really a bit of the, for, of the yeah. format of Left, Left, the first Left of Us. Uh, they have done that with some yeah. the season aspect, yeah. etc. But here, yeah, as we have, we were yeah, forced we really by this episode. Yeah, so and it's really cool also to create uh, Uh, like in a, in a comic book, uh, the the thing that is between two cases, you know. So it's, it's uh, the yeah, what's happening. What's during, happening during between the pause two episodes when, when you're and, away uh, from the game and you have this waiting time between the episode. There is things that happen in the game. We have sometimes two months that happens really in the in the game time between two episodes. And when you start a new episode, you can uh, read on the on Sean's diary to see um, what happened when basically we are not there um, and. I think that one final thing that was also interesting with this approach is also, of course, um, we have a bit of way to look at the player reception of an episode when we're still working on the next one. So while we are not changing mate, mate, uh, major elements, uh, we're still telling the same story. I think that pretty sure we're still looking at what work, what the player like, what the player disliked, and it still shapes a bit of how we will write and design also the, the remaining episodes. That's, a, that's an excellent benefit. Yeah. It seems that's cool. And did your players respond to that? Uh, I think it, it's it's more um, when we look at the player. It's like a huge playtest, in fact, yeah. to 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 release an episode. It's like you've got like the world, not the world, but a lot of player playing. So we yeah we look at with the design team. We look at uh, a, a lot of the the bugs, and I, I think it's more about. Not the bugs, but um, like you say, the, the the reception of maybe one on a character, for example. Here, Daniel, the, the young brother, is really important in our story. Uh, his AI, the way he moves, the way he talks to you, if you really understand what he think, etc. So it, it gives a, a lot of feedbacks. Uh, or is it interesting to just being with him and following him? This kind of uh, yeah, stuff can you can't really know after a, a playtest with, uh, I would say, 100 people. Here yeah, it's like so huge that you can really see, okay, it's, 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 those moments are working. And uh, even uh, on a gameplay point of view, we've got like, a lot of small gameplay, um, specific gameplay, so we can really uh, fix them uh, in the, the next episode each time. So I don't think the player will really notice that we are changing things mm -hmm. because it's not like they are not asking for something loudly and we are just putting it in the game, but it's more really adjusting and reacting to um, just an example for, uh, with, with the writing. It might be some small joke or small expression that we saw that worked in one episode and so we we, we see okay this kind of small humor or small we can do it again it worked and we can just adjust this kind of smaller details in the next episode oh, even sometimes it's a an expression a character have 
uh, has, and for us it was just a line, and it okay. it, it it become like the the line of this character uh, in the first uh, mm -hmm. season for sure with Chloe, for example. Or even in this one, like um, when Sean calls his little brother a nano, uh, it was something that came up in the first episode uh, with the voice actor we're working with, um, Gonzalo Martin, is um, from Argentina. And he mentioned that we could use this small nickname that he knows that is used in Mexico and that could work. Um, so we use it at one one part in the first episode and we saw that the, really the players liked it. There was some uh, art um, some fan arts where they were using this word in Nano on, on it. So cool. clearly we reused it and it was not planned from the beginning that... Uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that if the game had been done in a non-episodic form, I would have used this this word, lay west. Yeah. That makes... Okay, so... Going back to the very beginning, you know, what was the inspiration for the game in the first place? For the first one, or for, for the very first? Sorry, two? for like the the franchise and the, for, for the okay. first one. Uh, it's going back uh, a few years ago. Um, I think when we really started to work on on the first Life is Strange, we were just we just finished um, uh, on different position. We worked on the previous game. I don't know which was called uh, Remember Me. Right. Um, so that's an action, action adventure, more action, action combat game. Um, so I was uh, the art director on, on this game. You were a cinematic designer. And, um, and Jean-Luc Cano, who is our writer for Life is Strange, was uh, the cinematic director and one of the writers, uh, or dialogist, I don't know if... Mm. Yeah, he was on the writing team on the game. Uh, so the studio was doing other projects, and at a point we were... Also, uh, there was one of the co-founders of the studio who went to see us and said, like, maybe you can on the side think of a smaller project that could be yours, that could be a smaller game uh, for the company. So we started to really think of just like, OK, we, we have the opportunity to maybe to think of a small game um, that could be something clearly as most as we want. Um, and there was this idea to reuse some of the mechanics of uh, the memory remix, which was in the first game, which was the, the, uh, in Remember Me, those, those sequences where you could just go into someone's memory and, uh, and re rewind the memory, try to change something in the memory. So we thought that um, it could be interesting to use that in a, in a really much more narrative story, an adventure game. We really wanted to have more time having to tell a story to just let the player take his time not like in an action game where it's that it's fast paced and we I think we just asked ourselves what kind of game we would really like to play as a player mm -hmm. that we don't see much uh, there was also of course the examples back in time of uh, Telltale Games The Walking Dead uh, and some games that we also like really like from Quantic Dream so it was this kind of thinking that we said Okay, let's try to do something different, not an action game, a game where the player can take his time, where we can have a lot of environmental storytelling, character development, and and use this kind of small idea of rewinding. So then we started to brainstorm a lot to this to to think what would be the story, what kind of theme we want to talk about. And yeah, I think that's how it came to think that having a coming coming of age story in a high school setting where we could talk about some themes that we cared about. Uh, and let the player take his time and discover those characters. And um, I think this was the basics. And then it's just a lot of discussion and working on how you, what kind of budget you have, what kind of structure, what kind of um, uh, gameplay. And what I think is fascinating, though, is that what you, I mean, I think those are, it, it makes sense, right? It sounds like that fits the company structure, fits the skills that you had, but you also made the decision. To, to dive deep into subjects that most other developers won't touch. And so, I I mean, can you talk about the ex the decision, for example, to ex uh, to take uh, Chloe and Max's relationship beyond friendship, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I thought that was something that it was great that you explored and yeah. without without sugarcoating anything. Yeah, I, th I think this, um, this story of Max, we, first I would say it's a really a coming of age story. It's mm -hmm. who are you? It, as a teenager, you're going to you will make some choices that are going to define you as an adult, and uh, this is a moment in life that could be uh, quite difficult. And uh, in high school, uh, we all know uh, even more nowadays with uh, uh, social media, etc. You can have a, a lot of pressure. Don't really know who you are, who you want to be, um, on a lot of point of view with your family, with your friends, uh, with your sexuality, uh, what job you're going to do, etc. You ask you yourself a lot of questions, so we really wanted to use this story to talk about that. And 
link it with uh, the rewind power of Max was something since the beginning we we were thinking about choices, your consequences, immediate consequences, but also your consequences on on the long term. Uh, what uh, you are going to uh, to become, who you are going to become. So all those together, <coughs> we we wanted to to have this realistic story. So a teenager nowadays uh, in high school will have some. Um, uh, the player will be able to have some discussion with friends and family about all those subjects uh, because of the game. And I think this is the most uh, powerful thing with this game. It's people told us that because of the subject uh, we try to tackle in, in those games, they are able to talk about it with their friends and family. And uh, the relation with Chloe is one of, yeah, of them for sure. It's really um, one of the big theme after the coming of age is, of course, uh, friendships, this relationship between Max and Chloe. And it was yeah, it was really important for us to, um, since Max is a teenager, it's a, a period, time of life where you, where you can ask a lot about yourself. It was really important for us to let also the player decide how how deep and what kind of relationship the player want to explore with with Chloe, uh, a former best friend. And it felt yeah, it just felt really natural, given also the choice and the agency we wanted to give to the player to let this story be told this way, where the player could just try to have a, a romance with Chloe or just see her as a best friend and really try to work a, a, around, around those subjects. Yeah, that's the kind of choice that I don't remember seeing in other games at all, and, and which is great. I mean, the fact that one can, exp especially if you are a teenager and, mm -hmm. and you want to you know, ask those questions and, and be able to start to explore them in a video game. How unique is that? I mean, and, and related to that, I mean, how would you like to see LGBTQ plus narratives and representation expand in video games in the future? That's a, that's a, oh, yeah. a good question. Uh, I think first, when we work on, on our story and on our games, what I think that what's important for us is um, working on a game takes uh, takes quite a long time. Uh, I mean, it's like it was four years for this one and a bit more than three years for, for the first one. So it takes a long time of your life, and you, as a creator, you, we show that we won't do that many games during our, 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 our life. So at the point, using those life uh, for us, and at least for me, it's really important to that there is a way to share some subjects and some, um, I would say, almost values that are important in a way for us to just to not just do entertainment, but also to somehow put some part of I need. Uh, I mean, ideas that we feel are important, <coughs> we're caring about. Um, so that's why we tried in the first life and in the second one to, on top of telling this bigger story with one major theme of uh, coming of age in the first game and uh, brotherhood and education in the second game, it was important to um, also talk about subjects and subjects of society subjects that we felt were important nowadays, why we were making those games that could be important to um, present to the players mm -hmm. in a way. Um, so in representation, representativity and in, 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 uh, being inclusive is really important for us because it's, um, we think that, and especially with the second game, we're talking a lot about those subjects about, about exclusion, but we think that clearly nowadays our, our world is getting somehow um, more and more individualistic and there is a lot of um, people are just sometimes just looking at themselves and not looking enough at what's the other people around <laughs> them and we thought that it was important if we could present all the different sort of people you can meet around you and maybe also talk about people that sometimes you are, are overlooked in society that you don't look much or don't, maybe don't talk enough about it could be really important just to try to um, yeah, to share maybe some some of those values with, with, with people that you should sometimes maybe just look at the other people in a neutral way and see for who they are and not having some um, preconstructed ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, I know that I and others are really impressed with how you ad, uh, address mental health issues in, in your games. And so do you think that in the games industry in general, we address mental health issues with enough gravity and professionalism. And, and if a, we don't, that's a tough question. What should, what should we be doing? 
So, I mean, you guys, yeah. too, right? And yeah, just, but uh, it's difficult because you can't really, I can know, like give lesson. It's weird for us also to give lesson or to say it should be done like this or that. Can you uh, offer advice though? Let's say yeah. let's say that one is making a game that involves PTSD or bullying mm -hmm. or or depression. Mm -hmm. right? What what advice do you have for developers who want to tackle those topics in a in a respectful way? We, we always talk about this uh, a lot, especially yeah. before the second uh, Life is Strange, because uh, you don't want to be uh, to do a list of all the subjects. Say, okay, let's talk about all this. I think it's we we want also to to create a story and a character first, and those, this story and those character and the gameplay and everything. This game will allow us to put the player in some situation where. He will be in the shoes of someone else, like every video game, and he will have to think about the subject. But each time we try, begin to create a scene talking about those subjects in, uh, in particular, we try to not say this is good or bad, mm -hmm. or it's more you are in this situation, you will have to think about it because you have to, to play. And this is what is so strong with this media and why we love to create video game instead of a movie, for example, with those same themes. Because here you will be inside, you will be part of this and it will be because of your actions that all those uh, scenes will occur. And so it's really strong. And we have seen that uh, to talk about, for example, the, the scene with, uh, with Kate in the first Life is Strange. Uh, uh, so talking about uh, depression, etc. I think to be part of this scene, to be in front of someone, and you have to talk with her, you have to try to understand her as a player, as a, your avatar. I think it's really, really strong. And for in this particular example, it's a lot of research. Is not uh, trying to gamify or simplify the subject, for example. So it's. A lot of giving a lot of context to Kate, to her character, showing that it's not just a NPC. It's a, a, a girl that come from a family and have some maybe some issues for some reason, or um, explaining what she like or not, etc. Creating all this context, so it's re respect the character and also respect the subject itself, of course. But it's yeah, mainly a lot of research and. Always, it's it was uh, each time we talk about it, it's be careful to not use it or I don't know yeah. to say or gamify it uh, yeah. for the wrong reasons. Yeah, for sure. I think that um, um, those topics and any issue that uh, people are facing in in real life, it I think that it should never be used for sensationalism. Mm -hmm. um, or it's important to think that people are experiencing those issues, and that's uh, something that I mean us we don't have much much issues issues ourselves so it, we need to be really careful when we are talking about um people that are when we are talking about issues that a lot of other people are experiencing it needs to be done really respectfully and making sure that we document ourselves a lot that we talk to people to make sure that we are uh, in a way sharing uh, their struggle in a in a way that is a true or good representation um, and yeah, I think for mental health, um, I don't, of course, don't, don't have, we don't have any advices to give, but uh, there is, I, I know sometimes, you know, it's, there is this old cliche in horror games or horror movie when you're using, uh, uh, mental issues as something that's really scary when you are presenting some monsters in asylums or stuff like that, which I don't know. I think it can be a weird way to, to, to showcase this because it can, put some finger pointing on mental issues that's something that's really weird or, or, or bad or scary when it's just in it's it just a health issue which is isn't scary at all which should just be taken care of that makes sense and I, I roll you you mentioned gamifying right in the the uh, in the importance of avoiding gamifying during production or during prototyping did you ever take it too far and, and learn some lessons about what wasn't normal? yeah we so it's a good question. There is some, again, the first life change was quite a long time ago, but I, I remember um, to take a, a concrete example, the euthan euthanasia scene with uh, Chloe. Uh, this is a moment that we have, you have to make a choice. And we, f in this Singapore, uh, when you make a choice in your game, you've got some like 
uh, HUD or um, sound, specific sound, yeah. etc. And in this case, for example, we sound it was like weird to hear that in this moment, and to so we decided to just uh, uh, develop uh, just another um, really simple one. Yeah, a simple choice. Uh, uh, what do you say, uh, HUD or yeah, choice with, moment with, we, without all the artifacts we had for the other one because we wanted to show that at this moment it's quite different. It's not, it, 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 feel, uh, it felt too gameplay, I would yeah. say, at this moment. And you just want the player to feel that it's an important moment. And we have even uh, added uh, another moment of choice for the same choice. You know, it's uh, you have to choose to, to end the the life of someone else, of your friend. So it's, it was quite difficult. So we, ch we have chosen to add another choice to be sure that the player takes the time to really think about this and not doing like, okay, let's go and uh, unfold the story and move on. And uh, I think it's important in some moments like this to change a bit and not just using your bricks and uh, your gameplay bricks. And uh, maybe for this specific moment, it's important to change a bit, even to, to show the respect you have for this moment or for the issue and uh, for, for Kate uh, on the roof it was the same uh, we have this gamify uh, gamifying aspect was really complicated because you've got like a, uh, not a, a counter yeah there's say, a, a series uh, of questions a score, and there is still yeah, this like a score behind hidden uh, the way we, you have to script the scene so we we still had to think of what how we would make it like you can you could save her or not with your answer so it's, it was still gamified in a way where it was it needed to be scripted like it was if you have three out of four go good answers, it's okay. If you have less, it doesn't work. Or, but it was really complicated to work on this one without just thinking that, okay, it's 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 not a it's not a game where it should should be like this. But you have at a point to make it for the, the mechanics of the game to work. So it's yeah. this one was tricky to to make sure that it felt right for the player and that all those hidden scores were hidden the most as possible. So you're not trying to achieve something by uh, by succeeding or not, and that, that the dialogue needed to feel really more natural, where what you were saying, Kate would be reacting in a different way based on based on, on, on if you um, at the if you what was the word just to getting more intention to her before if you knew her if basically the, the idea was that if you knew your friend, you could help her better than if you didn't know her. Yeah. yeah. Did well. So when you were making those calls. And getting the feel for what it was like, and, and deciding how far you wanted to go, were you bringing in other members of the team? Were you doing outside testing? Were you bring people in? How would you make those calls? Um, I think we work with the design team directly, uh, and uh, it was also very uh, linked to the cinematographic team also because here we we try to find. Uh, some way to avoid this score aspect and this HUD aspect. So it's more like a shot on uh, on the feet or a shot on her, on her face, and to make the player understand what's going on and if he's right or wrong. So you have to find other um, uh, yeah other way to, to to make the game understandable. Uh, so here yeah, it was a lot of meeting uh, yes, with Michel and with all the team, uh, I would say the, the camera team and the yeah, design team. And, 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 and after with the, the, with the writer to, to yeah. make sure because the, the, the writing answer of, Kate of, are really important, yeah. of what you're telling her and what she's answering, I think we rewrote this scene almost four times mm. until we were to make sh making sure that it was working and that, um, again, it was not gamified or that no, no sentences felt too weird or that... Um, it needed to feel really natural, uh, so if or, or else this scene would have been could have been seen almost as a, a bit of exploitative. I, I'm. How was the rewriting process? And I only ask this because uh, when when we have to rewrite scenes, there are a lot of people involved. At least when we do in Insomniac, and it can it can mean a lot of changes mm. for the game. Um, how if people disagree with what you are seeing and interpreting in the game from the camera angles and the player's expression and say how the game mechanics that you're introducing, how do you just how do you approach those disagreements as leaders of the team? It's it's com it, it's always complicated because you're right that each time um, if it's too late in the process, if we rewrite something, it means um, redoing the work of a lot of people. Uh, be it uh, most of the uh, the camera team, where they would have to maybe readjust the timing, 
uh, the animators, if, if we rewrite a line and it doesn't match the animation anymore, you have to tinker and adjust the animation. So most of the time we, we try to uh, lock uh, the script mm. when it's possible. So before the polish of the animation and the camera is done, but you're right that there is sometimes uh, when we play test the game and if we think that it's really needed to, to adjust something, we try to talk also with production to make it happen because it's really, really important in those games that uh, the f it's the final story and the final product that's really important. And there is a, if there is a line that clearly doesn't work, it sometimes really needs to be adjusted. Yeah, it's, it's quite a small team. For the first life exchange, we were like 40 people at maximum. And uh, for the second one, it's 50. So it stays small for us. And so I would say it's quite flexible. Uh, I think the politician would say it's messy, but uh, uh, for me, it's really, I love this process because um, um, I think we are never, we're never sure of ourselves and we really need to, to see pad in hand uh, play, while playing that it works or not. And as it's a very cinematographic uh, game, uh, it's not based on a gameplay uh, loop, etc. So it's, it's really different when you've got your gameplay loop and it's work. It's, it's okay, you can reproduce it and it works. You, it's a lot of work, but it's quite different. Here, a scene could just be bad and because of the acting, because of the camera angle, etc. So you can really ruin your, ca your character uh, uh, with uh, bad writing. Um, so yeah, I think we change qu we quite a lot even during the production. Uh, to f it's more, I would say, cut some sentence. We, we yeah, discuss a lot yeah. with Michel to, to be two directors together. We, we f is, what is cool is that we have to fight together before seeing the team. So we fight together and after we agree, so we know that what we want. And of course, the narrative team give a, lo a lot of feedbacks. Uh, the camera, uh, the camera team, I think, has a lot of work to do. And we can create some miracles, even f with bad animation or a problem in motion capture, for example or a sentence that is not so good, or you can't really uh, do good fashion on this one. You can find some tips to avoid to those, shoot, those shoot problems. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think also the fact that our game is not a triple A game, it helps a bit because we, we don't have a perfectly synchronized animation to each scene. We have more for the second game than for the first one, of course, but we still have, and we have an art style that's not completely high fidelity. So it's, Sometimes it's more okay, I would say, that in a AAA game to adjust a line and make it work somehow with with the animation. I mean, even if it's not the perfect performance capture, it's it's okay for the style of the game. Uh, so I guess that's one of the mm. benefits of being a bit more low key. Maybe just to talk very quickly about the process after writing the scene uh, with the writer, we go to motion capture. We've got this only the body we don't do like the recording at the same moment of the motion capture so only body animation you don't do facial recording no, at the same time no, as body. the facial okay. is done after okay so um uh we do all the body uh with final voices um but we will shoot the scene with uh, ivona voices so robot voices uh, record the voices um so here uh, in la um during the night uh, in France yeah. and uh, import them. And after we can do the facial uh, when it's needed. So it helps a bit to, so at each yeah. step we can adjust. Uh, it means that if even with the Ivona, we say, okay, maybe not in this, we don't need this line or we can change a bit, change a bit this line. Even after doing the recording, we have some adjustment with the actors. And after we import the voices, okay, this, uh, the length of this voice is working really cool. I, I should do a, a, a shot on his face instead of, of uh, another shot I've, I've done, etc. So we we change during the whole process. It's not we are not looking. Uh, so for some people it would be better, but we think that it gives us also the freedom to adjust at, until the end. So the idea is not to, of course, destroy the work of the whole team. Uh, 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 on on a, on a Monday morning, uh, okay, let's uh, delete all this. But it's to yeah, uh, fine and just uh, until yeah, the end. Really a few mo a few moments during each uh, process where there is still fine tuning that can be done until looking completely a scene. Well, I mean, speaking of the team, is is the culture at Don't Nod the result of the games, or are the games the result of the culture? <laughs> uh, 
I really don't know. I mean, I don't know. We, are, we have a lot of different separate teams, so we will I would say, mostly we, we, talk about our, can talk our about Life is Strange, Strange team yeah. because there is a lot of different projects and different teams working on, on different well, projects. Well, let's talk about Life is Strange. And yeah, just because I think specific. even on all the other projects, like uh, we've got Action Game, for example, so it's quite different, yeah. of, of, of course, of, for the process. And uh, But yeah, for Life is Strange... I think you... Yeah, it's a, I think it's a game for sure. Uh, first, uh, we we have a vision. I would say we we had with Jean Luc Cano, uh, our writer. When we we begin to work, we say, okay, what is um, the important thing of this game? Why we are creating this game during years? Uh, and we talk with it with the team, and we say, okay, as soon as we have this um, main points, I think we try to to stick to them. And uh, of course, we have to cut a lot of things and to reduce sometimes the quality but uh, as soon as we reach those goal um, I think it's okay for us and this is what we try to do with uh, Michel is to just uh, you know that to keep the the ship uh, Flo uh, floating yeah but and yeah, going I to the right direction and yeah. I think our team I, I mean we're really proud of, of the Life is French team and I think that I think I would have a good um, good mood with the team and there is a good culture within the team yeah. and oh, how would you I, if you had to use one word to describe the culture of the team what would it be oh so let's think of just, just one word or two uh, I, would, I would say passionate for uh, my, my part i might have said a bit family i don't know oh that's know. great oh, i mean yeah that, that makes cool. a lot of sense given the topic of your games <laughs> yeah. right topics of your game so even if we were uh, a bigger team for the second game um i think there's there still a good yeah Good core, core nucleus of some of the of the team that we I would say share a bit of the vision and even the theme that we want to talk about the game and I know that a lot of people in the team are quite proud of uh, of those two games uh, for also what they are they are talking about. So. Yeah, creating games that matters. I think it's really the thing they are proud of and passionate uh, with. Yeah, and for sure. I and think uh, you, you need to have that to because it's you know that uh, how complicated it is to make games so. At a point, you need to. I think that most of the people, and us first, but also some uh, a lot of the people that we are working with, I think that they need to know that somehow it matters what they are doing, and so just to go back to work each day, that it has something that uh, think that it's worth working, worth it to work on those games. I I think that's great. I mean, do you do you actually literally say we make games that matter? Okay, that's because that's that's a wonderful statement. It's. We hope so. I would uh, say, yeah, yeah. but uh, I mean, it's up to the other people. Uh, I would say that I hope that we are making uh, for me games that matter to me at least, and then hopefully that will matter to others. I can I can tell you from personal experience with uh, people who are very close to me, your games do matter, and, cool. and they Thank make you. a difference. Thanks. Yeah, uh, and I kind of want to go back to to Life is Strange too. Uh, as you were developing the game, the political landscape in the United States was shifting dramatically. Mm. Uh, how did that affect your episodes? Hmm. Um, we, I mean, obviously, started... you, I'm sorry, I should, for anybody who hasn't played, your episodes actually do have a lot of connection to things, themes in the United States. But mm -hmm. um, I, would, I would love to know if you, if you discuss it openly mm. and, and, or even subconsciously, do you think that what was go what's been going on has affected mm. you? Uh, I think the first script when we started to write the story, it was in early 2016. Yep. So mm -hmm. it was before um, the elections in the United States. And it wa we still knew that we this was still this big story um, about those two brothers um, uh, facing those difficulties and about those large team of, of exclusions. Uh, but then when, um, I mean, we started the, just the beginning of the pre-production on episode one, then we switched to work on Captain Spirit. And I think that when we went back to work on episode one, two, three, and four, and five, it was after the election. So it was in 2017, I think, when we really started to create directly the episodes. So I would say that, of course, it um, it had some impact on uh, on some slight, uh, on some details on the writing, because, of course, the game takes place uh, Nowadays. Nowadays, in real life, so we had to take into account uh, what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, but as a bigger, bigger picture, of course, uh, it was it's a game that takes place in the United States. But uh, so, and we live in France, uh, so we don't want um, 
you know, to be the, the, the French guys and the French team who try to to make uh, to give to give some lessons to 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 other countries. So, but the themes on the uh, in the game, we think that they are quite universal. I mean, in, in in France and in Europe, we have a lot of issues and even more each year with uh, with uh, police violence, with border issues. Uh, we have a lot of uh, far right uh, movements that are always on the right, on the rise uh, in Europe. So I think that the themes we are talking about in this game, they are also close to us. And since Life is Strange takes place in the United States, of course, we choose this this setting in more in, in, in particular to to describe the story of Shannon Daniel. I'm glad you brought up the fact that I mean, the point that you are French developers and you're making a story in America. And but also I, I, I imagine that many gamers maybe aren't paying as much attention to what is going on in Europe as they are in America or many American gamers, right? Yeah. So can you talk more specifically about your, how, how being French does influence everything you do, you make? <laughs> it's a very tough question. Uh, or does it? We, we, does we, it? we protest all the yeah, time. Yeah, we together protest a lot because because French do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you we, argue. Oh, we, yeah, we are going. Yeah, yeah. we. I'm. I'm really we grumpy. Yeah. Grumpy. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's my French. Uh, um, wait, wait. Is that a? Is are you saying it's a trait of being French? You, you, yeah. you're grumpy and you argue a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> just want to make that clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. think I think it is <laughs> for sure. <laughs> You, you know, the France is uh, uh, since two weeks now. It's completely yeah, right. uh, under riot, uh, on, on, on strike, <laughs> on strike a lot so of protests on right yeah, now. Yeah. So you know, for, for for good reasons, but yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a, something that we do a lot to it's just say when we are we're, when we are not happy, we we, we say it. Yeah. <laughs> well, does that does that actually practically does that affect on not does it affect your company when oh, yeah, there are riots sure. going on? So yeah, how does it affect you? It's uh, it's complicated, but it's. No, it's every every year. So <laughs> we used to. And you mean you ask if it affects? You mean um, inside the people working the company or organization? Uh, organization? Because right now it's a lot of of strikes in 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 public transport and everywhere, and for good reason about some uh, some retirement law that will be that that will change. And yeah, in France there is a, I think a, still a quite uh, I don't find the word a, a good. Uh, will of still ac don't accept uh, everything to protest and to uh, yeah, the result of uh, sen syndicalization, Syndic uh, uh, union, union. Sorry, okay. the result of unions um, in France and unions are still people are still going to unions to try to defend their, their rights, which I think is cool. But yeah, it can be sometimes complicated. <laughs> sure, I mean that, that, but it's it's an additional. Not a twist is the wrong word, but just another hurdle I would imagine as a business in France that you just have to deal with. If it's if it is affecting your business, I mean, trans transportation is a great example. If, you, if it's hard to get to work because the transportation yeah, so is on strike, we find a way to work remotely. Or yeah, there is always ways, but yeah, it can be can be a hurdle. But I think it's part of um, of being French. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no uh, under French culture, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but you but you say but you also mentioned that it's you the riots and protests are for a good cause. So, I mean, that's what I think you just said. And do you also bring any of those causes into the games, at least peripherally? Mm. Or do you, do you have a, do you even, sorry, I, I, I'm interrupting my question asking, which is terrible, but, or do you have aspirations to do that in the future? Is that something you'd like to do? I think it's Sorry. part. Yes, oh, no, no, no. I think it's part of the role of. Uh, we we don't have subjects that directly linked to um, some of the issues um, with the riots uh, in France. Or I think we don't have direct exact example in in the games. But those are still bigger. I would say bigger general issues that we are still somehow um, dealing with. I mean, in Life is Strange too, we have basically a game that's um, showing. Um, uh, people, characters that some, somehow are powerless facing the institutions and a lot of the, uh, the deeper causes for some of the riots and the strikes is about that. It's about just people not feeling that they have any, they can do anything under governments and under uh, a state that try to somehow decide for them and uh, yeah, a lot of um, 
system uh, that just doesn't allow them to sometimes have uh, some of their own will or of their just uh, own realization. And I mean, in, in the game, we are talking about that with uh, in different ways with some of the characters, just to show that sometimes you have your own own will, own agency that is taken a bit from you from 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 society. And I think that's why we wanted to create also this story to put those brothers on on the road, uh, fleeing, uh, exist in the wild. Of course, if it happens in reality, you will have to meet some people that have decided to live in a different way. Uh, I would say out of the margin or out, uh, yeah. in, a, um, in, uh, in the margin of the society. Mm. Sorry. So, so specifically, you've and I think I've read this that you were interviewing people who. Right. Yeah, yeah during our, our research, yeah, with Michel, we've been here yeah, and Jean Luc also, the writer, we've been here you know, several times, of course, for, to, to take a lot of photos, recording some sounds, uh, interviewing some people. And yeah, the idea was to, um, at the beginning, also see if this uh, story is believable, uh, having those two kids in the United States crossing a lot of states, different states. Uh, because it's, it's incredible when you travel here in the US. It's mm. so different from one state to another or, or from north from south, etc. The, the weather, the, the law, uh, everything is changing, the, the way the people are behaving. So it's re it was really important for us to show that in the game and to be sure that this story is believable uh, with those two kids, to be able to walk, to meet. So we, we have met a lot of people that have decided to live in a different way. Uh, hitchhikers, people who want to live in, who are living in their cars, um, people that have decided to live in a, in a community alone in the desert, this kind of, of thing. Uh, because this is not people you will meet directly, or we sure. are living in big cities, we are used to our comfort, we not, really sleeping under uh, the stars. I think a lot of people uh, in our world don't know what it is to sp sleep in the wild, uh, the sound, uh, uh, the cold, etc. Mm. etc. Et so we really wanted to uh, with Sean putting the player in, the, in his shoes and showing that it could be different just to op open, uh, like Michel was saying, open a bit uh, 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 the mind on um, giving the curiosity to maybe not judging uh, people that are excluded or that are different or, or uh, I don't know, like they, they can look weird or and you are going to judge them very quickly. This is what we do in, in big cities uh, every day. Uh, you can judge some people very quickly here because the player and the and Sean will have to seek some help. It will have to meet those people and maybe understand what is the context and what is their history. It's just be curious. So yeah, we. I think this story was also for that to talk about exclusion and uh, the difficulties you can have in life. That's great. I mean, that, that sounds like research that all developers should be doing <laughs> any, any subject. I mean, having the opportunity to go out and actually talk to the, the people that you may be um, telling stories about. Uh, so, so speaking of unusual digging into unusual and, and challenging subjects did you ever get any backlash from from players and, and if and if you did how did you deal with it um i, I don't remember a specific uh, yeah i don't don't think we had some real specific backlash about one specific subject we definitely had a bit of backlash on a broad on the broad aspect that mm -hmm. um, the game was felt to be too political uh, failed to be too political yeah yeah we we i don't i don't know if it was a backlash but there was definitely players who said that they didn't want to have that many politics in their game and some we know that we had some bad user score review from just also people who just said like you know in you know that but you know in metacritic having some yeah. uh, zero on 10 just and the only thing that said it like too political we had some for sure uh, but it was not on a specific subject it was more like yeah, so we don't want to hear about that. Or yeah, we don't, yeah. we don't we want, want to have this that. in games, yeah. for example. And yeah, uh, really. Yeah. And would they would was did you see that in the user reviews, or would they actually contact you through uh, community emails? I think that was Twitter. I don't know if we received emails. Maybe uh, on Twitter for sure. Not much because we still have a really good community with Life is Strange, and I, I think it's. Uh, I mean, I. Uh, we don't see a lot of really violent message against us, which I think is great because I know 
some some games some some developers that receive a lot of really uh, harsh and and horrible message uh, but yeah for this one we saw a bit more backlash than for the first one for sure and uh, yeah it was a bit of I don't know if it makes the sad or but in a way I don't think that we would change it we don't change we won't change that anyway for those reasons because I agree that and I understand that uh, some people maybe you don't want to go back from work to or and sometimes you just want also to 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 have fun to play an entertaining game you might not want to see the issues that you see every day in life to see them again in the game uh, and and that's okay I mean you just also maybe don't have to play this game or maybe play it later when you're in a, in a mood where it's okay to see this this, this game. I, I think that it's the same that in movies, we're not always in the mood to watch uh, a sad or documentary about it. And sometimes you just want to, to watch a comedy or, 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 or a big sci-fi blockbuster. And sometimes you might want to, to watch a, a movie that might make you a bit more uh, sad or something, but it's not. Yeah, there is a there is space for a lot of different kind of content anyway. So I guess that this kind of backlash, mm. we don't really care much about it. And uh, on the other hand, I think the second season uh, now it's finished, and I think the players are really happy to see some sims inside this game. Mm. Uh, of course, talking about the Sean Brothers that are half Mexican, so the situation they are facing. Uh, talking about the ex exclusion. Um, also, yeah, uh, know, know that this is a big picture. I think a lot of players who were saying at the, during the first episode, yeah, it, I don't want to hear about that. Know that they have the whole story and the whole journey. I think they understand what we wanted to talk about. And uh, yeah, really happy. And after, for just the feedbacks, I know some scenes, particular scenes uh, that are really difficult. It's not that players... Uh, dislike those scenes, it's more that it reminds them a lot of their own uh, life and their own souvenir. So it could be really very pa painful. And I completely understand that. And uh, so for us, it was not very uh, uh, pleasing. Pleasant, yeah, yeah, pleasant. Pl pleasant to play because it it's hard. And it's uh, so, yeah, it's I completely understand that. And uh, again, it, I'm happy when I read and we receive a lot of letters talking about that. Uh, uh, as soon as it's done with respect, it's okay, but it just is too difficult for me to play because it, yeah, my my family, my friends, right, it remind me of a lot of things. So yeah. Do with that in mind, do you have stories of players who come back to you and say you've you've changed my life? Um, yeah, we. Uh, quite a lot. Yeah, so we received cool. a, a lot of uh, a lot of message from from for both the first game and, and the second game, be it sometimes direct on by emails or on social media or just a lot of letters uh, we received uh, directly. And yeah, it was incredible when it started with the first game when we were really not really not w expecting this uh, that to 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 read that or to receive those messages. It, yeah, it was quite really really touching because it's. Like I said, when you spend a long time working on a game, when you try to talk about subjects that you care about, and if you see that it war that somehow it helps people, that people are, are are deeply moved by what they played, and maybe that it helps them. I guess that's a really best way to to say that that maybe we are not making useless useless games, and that we can wish. It 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 pushes you also to say that okay we we have it's it's good to do what we are doing because it if we can help people it's it's great. Again, from personal experience, I can tell you that it is it does make a difference. I mean, I think having games that allow people to kind of think deeply about themselves and ask tough questions and hopefully reach some resolution through the stories or the interactions they're having that's gold. I mean, you, I just don't think we see that too often, and you guys are um, are doing that, which is wonderful. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And ev even it's um, sometimes just having the subject uh, inside the game. It's all to um, let people talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what they are really happy with: is to not be alone. Well, I, I don't know, but when I was young, it was not so much video game, but uh, books or movies. When you see some those media and you recognize yourself, or you see uh, a movie where oh, this director. Has done something about that. It's I don't know. It it will be it will be your your whole life. Be, just be because it talk about something that touched you. 
So I think it's important, and video game is working on. Uh, is great also for that, and uh, yeah, even more with the, the interactivity and yeah. everything. It's really powerful if you can put a player in the shoes of someone else. You can um, can think about this this person, think about another situation, or and what you are what you are saying is right. If you can create also uh, have more representativity and and present situation that. Are not shown often in games. You can also have p- players uh, be really feel feel great about uh, seeing part of themselves in the game and seeing that I don't know they are they are talked about, they they are cared about in a way. So, last question for you: When you look ahead to the technology that is going to hit next year, that's already hitting, and you think about what you have been able to do with your games and, and break new ground in terms of storytelling and addressing difficult subjects, where do you, what are you excited about with interactive storytelling in the future? What possibilities do you see? Um, I would, maybe it's not about the creation itself and all the, what would be the next narrative game, but uh, I'm, for example, uh, I love uh, VR, and I think it could be uh, something really interesting to explore uh, virtual reality in, narr- in narrative because of, of course, uh, interactivity, but also how you can really dive into uh, um, an experience, a narrative experience. So this is something I'm a huge fan of, and we discuss, uh, of course, a, a lot uh, with Michel about that, but uh, it's uh, just the beginning, but I think it will be for sure something uh, uh, huge and uh, I know you're doing some here uh, a bit in the Simulac so uh, uh, I'm quite curious about all the VR project and uh, yeah I think it's in, narrati- in narrative uh, in particular it could be quite powerful and uh, I think it's really just the beginning um, yeah. and just to parenthesis no, about you're, VR you're, but you're, I'm you're really right. uh, and I think that for the kind of games we're making it's I would say it's a bit less about technology and more about see how we can improve and do better on on the writing on the on the narrative design on the on the, on the game design how to make the player uh, feel more uh, even more in connection with the characters so vr definitely is something that can can work uh, can can work really well and and on the other side it's uh, um, of course, having a better technology for improving, that's something that we also, in our game, always need to improve. Improving the facial animations, improving the connection with the character is important. But I think that we also really need to work as designer on how we can somehow even give the player the feeling that he's more, he has um, more dialogue options and more agency on the dialogues or that he can be more... Um, even with the choices, even continue to try to improve uh, the kind of choices we give to a player. So he has really the feeling that he's um, playing and living the character rather than sometimes just watching a story and having a few few small decisions over the story. This is a kind of, of idea that we could definitely try to continue to work on. Even from the first life exchange to the second one, we have tried to add uh, a lot of consequences. Even if it's small ones, it make your this journey your journey mm-hmm. as player. And uh, I think we will it will continue to be improved on. Uh, to try sure. to improve. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's fantastic. Well, uh, if if people have additional questions and they want to reach you on Twitter, are you comfortable sharing your Twitter? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Good. yeah, of course. Uh, my my Twitter is uh, at dontnod underscore michel. Uh, M I C H E L. Okay. And my Twitter is like three days uh, ago, uh, created three days ago, so it's quite a fresh one. Uh, so it, I'm not so connected, but uh, I will be happy to answer. And it's at Raoul Barbet. That is my uh, first name and uh, full name. Uh, my full name, sorry. With no so space. With no space, no point, nothing. No and nobody problem. else had that name. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I, wow. So maybe it's too French. I don't know. Raoul <laughs> Barbet. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, well, guys, thank you so much. For no, a thank you for your time. It Thanks. was really great discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you for your questions. Yeah, really great uh, ch- chatting with you. And thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for your time and for having us here. It was really cool. Thank you for joining us for the Game Maker's Notebook. 
For more information on the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, our podcasts, and our other initiatives, please visit www.interactive.org.